welcome one and all to another Team Thumbs video. Today I'll be looking at 5 games from my childhood that I feel are underrated. What happens when you meet at a wizarding school? Get bored so you ditch class. You steal a spell book, try a level 10 spell. Release young Gary a green monster that consumes an entire village. Pandemonium. Roll credits. Choose either Nikki or Fargus and Sid, since a puppet of Fargus is not a third character, and try to fix the mess you've created in this 2.5 dimensional side scroll platformer. Defeat your enemies mostly by jumping on them, but you will also have access to power ups in forms of spells. Both characters have a unique ability Nikki can double jump, and Fargus has a spin attack. Developed by Toys for Bob, the team behind the recent Spyro Reignited trilogy and Crash Bandicoot 4 and the people who need to get their butts into gear into remastering the crop games. I had a lot of fun playing this as a kid and it's still fun to this day. Ah, the game that was easily overshadowed by Final Fantasy. And for good reason. Final Fantasy is the best running franchise of all time. My video, my opinion, Square Enix, call me. As I sit here and remember how awesome the game is, I struggle to remember the story. So I did a quick wiki. Human civilization can perform superhuman feats due to statuesque objects. Mist appears, covers earth, civilization collapses, bad things happen, revive Genesis trees, there's literally three lines of plot. I remember loving this game, I'm playing it slowly away from this review, and it lives up to what I remember. Just a shame it didn't do so well. What could be better than Mario Kart? Well, Mario Kart and Final Fantasy characters. Don't believe me? I refer back to my video, my opinion, Square Enix, seriously, call me, I want your babies. It has racing, the carts, it's got power-ups, unlockable characters, it even has a story. Yeah, beat that one Mario Kart. Not much else to say really, it's a different take on chocolate racing that we've seen in the Gold Saucer from like Final Fantasy VII. Uh, it's got the cute ass characters from Final Fantasy franchise, obviously, but who wouldn't want to go karting racing as a chubby chock, a white mage? Or even Cloud of School. The next in my list was going to be Bug for the Sega Saturn, but unfortunately I can't find a decent way to emulate that, so I'm going to go with one of the other mentions. Uh, Mickey Mania uh, for the Sega Mega Drive back in 1994 also came out on a SNES. It's your, you know, it's got your basic platformer 2D elements. You've got the jumping, you've got the throwing, blah blah blah. But um, yeah, for this one, it, it boasts uh, levels from. Like the classic cartoons, like you got your Steamboat Willy, you got Mickey and the Beanstalk, you got Prince of Pauper, and a few others. Uh, quite a fun little game. Really enjoyed it as a kid. Uh, obviously, I've downloaded the emulator now. So yeah, I'll most likely be playing this. I enjoyed it then. I enjoy it now. How can GTA be underrated? Well, we're going back, all the way back, back to before they released the same game every year for eight years straight. You know, Top-down view, very pixelated graphics, still has the same premise of the GTA games you'll know and love, it's just older. Releasing on the PS1, 21st of October 97. Three days after my 11th birthday, it would see two spin-offs two years later, with GTA London 1969 and London 1961. Although GTA was a bestseller here in the UK and a commercial success, with reviews both good and bad, with thank to the later games where it began is mostly long forgotten or unknown by a younger audience so to me now it's underrated thank you one and all for sticking around are there any games from your childhood that you feel are underrated let me know down in the comments and remember if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up enjoying the content subscribe for more it really helps us out and until next time goodbye